This video gives an example of computing the interval of convergence and the radius of convergence for a power series. To compute the radius of convergence and interval of convergence for this power series, we start by using the ratio test. So we need to find the limit as n goes to infinity of the absolute value of a sub n plus 1 over a sub n, where the a sub n's are the terms. For this power series, we can compute a sub n plus 1 by just plugging in n plus 1 everywhere we see an n in this expression. So that's negative 4 to the n plus 1 times x minus 8 to the 2 times quantity n plus 1 divided by n plus 1. We divide all that by the a sub n term, which is just negative 4 to the n, x minus 8 to the 2n over n, which I've just copied from the formula here. Now I'm going to simplify. I'll flip and multiply. And now I'm going to rearrange terms so that corresponding terms are on top of each other. So I'm going to write negative 4 to the n plus 1 over negative 4 to the n times x minus 8 to the 2 quantity n plus 1, that's the same thing as 2n plus 2, over x minus 8 to the 2n, and then I'll write the n and n plus 1, so that's n over n plus 1. Once I cancel terms, I get the limit of negative 4 times x minus 8 squared times n over n plus 1. Now as n goes to infinity, n over n plus 1 is going to 1. And the absolute value of negative 4 is just 4, and the absolute value of x minus 8 squared is just going to be x minus 8 squared, since this expression is always positive. So we have our limit, and the ratio test says the series will converge where this limit is less than 1. So next, let's set 4 times x minus 8 squared to be less than 1 and solve for x. In other words, x minus 8 squared is less than 1 fourth. Now we can't solve this quadratic inequality by taking the square root of both sides. That would lead something like x minus 8 is less than plus or minus the square root of 1 fourth, which doesn't even make any sense and is not true. What we can do instead is solve the quadratic equation, x minus 8 squared is equal to 1 fourth, and then use some logic to figure out the inequality. So now that we have an equation sign, we can take the square root of both sides to get x minus 8 is, is equal to plus or minus the square root of 1 fourth. In other words, x minus 8 is plus or minus 1 half. So in other words, x is equal to 8 plus 1 half or 8 minus 1 half, that's either 17 halves or 15 halves. Now let's go back to the inequality that we're interested in. Since we know that x minus 8 squared is equal to 1 fourth at x values of 15 halves and 17 halves, we can test to see whether x minus 8 squared is bigger or smaller than 1 fourth by plugging in values in between these numbers. So when x is less than 15 halves, just by plugging in a sample value like 0, we can see that x minus 8 squared will be bigger than 1 fourth. While when x is between 15 halves and 17 halves, say at a value of 8, we can plug in 8 and for x and see that 8 minus 8 squared, which is 0, is going to be less than 1 fourth. And finally, plugging in a value of x over here, maybe something like 10 for x, we're going to get a value of x minus 8 squared that is, again, bigger than 1 fourth. So putting this together, we can see that x minus 8 squared is less than 1 fourth 
when x is between 15 halves and 17 halves. So by the ratio test, our series converges for x between 15 halves and 17 halves. The ratio test also tells us that the series diverges when this expression is greater than 1. In order, other words, x minus 8 squared is greater than 1 fourth. In other words, for x values less than 15 halves or greater than 17 halves. Now the only thing we still need to figure out is what happens at the endpoints of the interval 15 halves to 17 halves. Recall that our series was given by this formula. So when x is equal to 15 halves, we have negative 4 to the n, 15 halves minus 8 to the 2n over n, which is equal to negative 4 to the n, negative 1 half to the 2n over n, which I can rewrite as negative 1 to the n times 4 to the n times negative 1 to the 2n over 2 to the 2n divided by n, which is the same thing as negative 1 to the n, 4 to the n, negative 1 to the 2n divided by n times 2 squared to the n. Since 2n is always even, negative 1 to the 2n is always equal to 1. And since 2 squared is 4, this 4 to the n on the denominator cancels with the 4 to the n on the numerator. So I'm left with the alternating harmonic series, which we know converges. So the series converges for x equal to 15 halves. Now when x equals 17 halves, we can go through the same computation, just using 17 halves in place of 15 halves. That changes the negative 1 half here to a positive 1 half. And now we have a positive 1 to the 2n, which is still always 1. Everything else works the same, and so we still have a convergent series. So going back up to the top, we know that the series actually converges for x greater than or equal to 15 halves and less than or equal to 17 halves. That is our interval of convergence. Closed bracket, 15 halves to 17 halves, closed bracket. Notice that the interval of convergence has length 1 because 17 halves minus 15 halves, the difference of the two endpoints, is 2 halves, which is 1. Also, the interval of convergence has center of 8 because the average of the endpoints, 17 halves plus 15 halves over 2, is equal to 8. This should come as no surprise because our original series was centered at 8. So if we draw our interval of convergence on the number line, it's centered at 8 and it extends out a total distance of one unit. In other words, it extends out by half a unit on either side, and so the radius of convergence is the length of the interval divided by 2, or 1 half. So we found the radius of convergence, and we found the interval of convergence, which was this closed interval here, and so that completes the problem.